It is now my honour and pleasure to introduce two people who need no introduction. Bono's commitment to Africa goes back 20 years, and when they founded, Bono and his wife Ali, the Eden uh, Fashion Group, it was with the purpose of helping Africa. Bono has been absolutely outspoken in his views about how the West should help Africa and push it forward. He has done so much to make that happen. Please welcome him and applaud him. Ali, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. So much for being Good. such a support for Eden from very early days. We really appreciate so, it. Really want to come, see. come and come and sit down here. So, right. Now, Bon, I, I want to start by asking you about the various different campaigns and projects um, <coughs> that you've done for Africa, but especially because we're talking a lot about Eden here and helping Africa through fashion and style and design. Where does Eden fit into your other projects that you do in and with Af uh, Africa? Well, just, um, first of all, just to say... When it comes to the continent of Africa, you know, we don't feel like we've, you know, it's a, um, it's what we've done f f for the continent. We feel the continent's done an incredible amount for us and changed our lives and in many ways um, greatly improved um, our lives. I've been working for Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Tutu since my late teens, which is long time um, in various ways and I guess that's where I fell in love with the continent you know it's m amazing magical magnificent sometimes maddening uh, continent um, I would say the two of them Tutu and, and Mandela asked me to use some of the accessories of fame to highlight some of the challenges and some of the solutions um, uh, that were affecting some pretty macro stuff that, uh, that was affecting the continent like um, old Cold War debts that were burdening um, uh, growth, uh, then the pandemic that was HIV AIDS um, and, and on. And so they're very hard to turn down, particularly Tutu. Um, and on the occasion where I have tried to turn him down, he's just said that I have to do it or else I won't get into heaven. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he's got pull there. So I've been working for them on this. So we set up one, the one campaign to sort of take on a lot of the big macro stuff. And, and, uh, and we've had a lot of success. It's 3.2 million members now worldwide, and we hold governments to account for the promises they've made on development and, and make sure that, um, that they deliver, because uh, governments love, they love the, the signing of the checks, but they don't like the cashing of them. And uh, then RED arrived because there's a lot of creativity in companies, you know, not just the philanthropy budgets, but the marketing budgets. I mean, Diesel's a marketing genius and, and just great at com communicating. Um, so with Apple and Starbucks and, and all of that, um, we, we, we got some noise um, and some heat on the issue of HIV AIDS and the fact that people were dying for less than $2 a day. In 2004, when we started, there was about 50,000 people on antiretroviral drugs who had AIDS. Now in the world, there's, there's uh, nearly 8 million people. So we feel we've made progress along with many others, but it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. On debt cancellation, uh, the recent figures are 50, an extra 52 children, 52 million children going to school 
on the continent of Africa because African governments collabor uh, spent that money very well. Which brings us to, to Eden. And um, I think, I think it's, uh, it was the trade piece. You know, we were very interested in what was going on in trade, the AGOA Accord, uh, and things like that. And we felt we needed to understand better trade. And, and it was Ali that pointed out the trade statistics that if, 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 if the continent could return to the place it had in the apparel sector, it would dwarf all the aid we were raising. So it was kind of a, a challenge from the missus, actually. Uh, and here we are. Us what it was like starting Eden, what it means to you, what it meant to you then, what you're trying to achieve with it, because you've always said that you want Eden to be strong fashion clothing label. You don't want it to be about philanthropy. It's not about pity purchasing. People don't buy your clothes because they're sorry for Africa or another country where you work. They buy them because they're good. Well, we fell in love with Africa in our mid-twenties. And um, it just puts you under a spell, the continent. The people, there's such a beauty, a raw beauty to the people and the landscape. And we couldn't think of a more romantic place, actually, to focus a fashion company. That's a good word. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, we realized that the backstory was so important. And all Africans that we spoke to said to us, if you want to understand us, do business with us. So, um, you know, we, we founded Eden based on four respects, which was respect for the consumer, respect for the person who made the clothes, respect for the communities they were made in, and respect for the materials that we used. And, you know, it's been tough. The fashion business is very tough no matter where you work. Um, I think you can ask anybody in the room that. Um, but it's been a huge learning curve, but um, it's an amazing journey. So. Bono, you've seen Ali work. You really work alongside her with this whole idea of Sleeping. Eden. <laughs> yeah. great. Um, so how do you feel about this goal of creating a fashion business? It's very different from what you do. And do you imagine that maybe this idea of commerce helping the African nation and people, could that be applied to something else that you do? Mm. Yeah, it, it has been very humbling. Uh, learning what, what, you know, you spent your life dedicated to this and, and thank you for hosting this conference. I think it's really smart because we have to completely reboot the way we think about the continent. It's, it's as I said, it's, it's, it's a romantic place. But it's just a sexy, noisy, vibrant. It's, 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 it's a, you know, it's just a different thing. And, um, and I think that you're right to point um, as, uh, fashion in the direction of Africa because by 2050, the population of Africa will double the population of China. Think about that. Half the world's youth will live on one continent. Think about that. And th this, is, this is the future, you know. And people say, oh, it's the, the 21st century, it belongs to China. Go ask the Chinese because they are all moving to Africa, and really and truly. And, and it's, this, is, this is the future. This, this, is, this is a remarkable, innovative, creative, entrepreneurial people. Uh, we were talking before about Malay Sanawi, the uh, Ethiopian president who just passed away. He was talking about how the smartest people in his country were farmers, and I said, why? Why do you say that, uh, Mr. President? He said, uh, because if they weren't smart, they'd be dead. And, uh, but on every street corner, entrepreneurs, innovators, you know, it's, it's, it's the future. I'm, I'm excited about it. So as to conscious commerce, which I think was probably your question, um, the generation that follows us understand the power they have in their pocket. And they're not going to buy a product just because it's worthy. You know, it's, uh, there is a sort of balance between virtue and desire that you have to get. And we don't want to be with Eden. I know Ali doesn't want to be weighed down by worthiness. It has to be, you have to have the desire. Um, but 
Yeah. Um, you have had this um, uh, injection of money and support from LVMH. Do you think that this is a sign that the big corporate brands are actually thinking in a bit of a larger way, and they're thinking about having a brand that is actually based, as yours is, on this really good cause, but with the idea that it is good business as well? Well, you know, LVMH have been great partners for us, and I think they've always understood that the backstory was important um, on any product and that's why they're one of the first major companies to really see that the consumers are asking more and more about transparency. They want to know, they want, they want value, they want meaning and meaning is at this point a luxury but we feel that should be a standard that no matter what you buy you shouldn't have to worry about who's benefited along the way or how they've benefited. You should just know that it's a good product and that, that should be the consumer luxury in every product. I mean, you told me that it isn't always easy and that you haven't been able, as you hoped, to source everything from Africa. You've gone to other countries. It's been a bit of a lear learning curve for you, yes? Huge learning curve, huge learning curve. And uh, but we didn't want another four kids, so <laughs> I had no choice. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we, at this point, Eden is producing 40% of our line in Africa and 100% of our Eden Live t-shirts are all grown and sewn in Africa. So, and we're hoping in 2014 we'll be at 50%, so we're growing all the time and, you know, the, the uh, capabilities are changing and it's, um, it's been a really exciting process. Well, I mean, put it another way, how do you both hope to see Eden in five years' time or seven years' time? How do you think you're going to grow it, particularly grow it to the advantage of the Africa that you love? Um, I, I would love to see it profitable, uh, personally. Uh, it costs a bloody fortune, and, uh, <laughs> and it really does. And now we're, we're, now we're partners with LVMH. Oh, great. There's us and them. It's like a minnow and a whale. So let's spend a load of money here. Ah! Uh, they, they, and they've been very, very good about it, I have to say. Bernard Arnault was really keen to make this uh, a success, and um, uh, Tony Baloney, all the, the, the people in the LV, LVMH network have been, have been great. So if it doesn't get to scale, by the way, it doesn't achieve the mission either. Then it was just some vanity project, and, you know, um, there's... There's other things you could, you could do with your life. Um, this has, this, we're serious. We're not going away. Um, we're very committed. We always knew we were in it for the long haul. And I think with LVMH, we know we, can, we have the best shot at growing it into a global fashion brand, but we're tiny at the moment. And, uh, you know, it's, um, but we are in, what's interesting, we are in the want business, not the need business. And not the need business. Not the need business. And so the most important thing for Eden is aesthetic. Clothes have to be beautiful. It has to be something you can't walk out of the shop without. And uh, that's just the most important thing. Desirability is sustainability for Eden. And if we can be sustainable, then we can work in a sustainable way. You were talking just now about your T-shirts, how they were 100%. You said a word like sewn and grown. or Is that yeah. right? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, actually, we have a. Um, we were very lucky in 2008. We started a program called Conservation Cotton Initiative, and um, in Uganda, in the poorest part of Uganda, in northern Uganda, in Gulu, where the, the area had been decimated by 25 years of war, civil war, um, Joseph Kony's area. Um, and the people have come out of displacement camps and they're trying to go back to work their land. So along with um, an organization called Technoserve, we've been able to provide funding and skills and um, sort of enterprise techniques so that they can build their farms into sustainable businesses themselves. So it was, I think, 8,000. We started with 500 farmers and we now have 8,500 farmers, which is, which is 8,500 families. And that program very soon will become sustainable in itself and we'll be redundant, which is great. Actually, yeah. I, I, it might be a moment uh, because uh, I think we've got an Ernestus... 
uh, Erastus Kibugu is, is here, who runs uh, uh, TechnoServe. Is he coming up? Here he is. And uh, CCIA. This, this is our guy. It's the dude. <laughs> Morning. What this, um, what is the uh, basis of all this is in Africa, how it operates. Can you tell us that? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, Do you want this one? Yeah, perhaps. Uh, there you go. Thanks, thanks, and uh, for for having me. And uh, thank you, Bono and Ali, and thanks, Susie, for such a wonderful conference. I just like to say that uh, in North Uganda. Um, over very, very many years, uh, the Lord's Resistance Army basically destroyed the livelihoods of people there and uh, took away their self-dignity. And what you do in, um, through the very generous fad in, uh, from uh, Bono and Ali and Eden is to actually begin to build back the social capital, beginning to get families uh, coming together, forming, forming themselves into groups, but also beginning to think uh, like business people, uh, these are people who lost their farming skills. They are people who lost markets. They lost trust in markets. And the initiative that we have, the Conservation Cotton Initiative, is beginning to help them make the baby steps towards uh, becoming small businesses that Ali talked about. So that smallholder farmers uh, are no longer subsistence, but they can actually begin to look at themselves as uh, small enterprises that think about costs, that think about revenues, and that think about just what you said about the smartness bono of uh, an African farmer in Ethiopia. So, so that's what we're doing. We also have a rotational crop strategy because soils need to be replenished and we want to make sure that this is sustainable. But in addition to that, we want to ensure that there is diversification of income so that farmers are earning from cotton, but they're also earning from their bean crop, they're also earning from their maize crop. And these 8,535 farmers, uh, the households that we talked about, uh, have a multiply effect, you know. Uh, the, the farmers need uh, spray hire services, they need to plow their land, they need to increase their productivity. And, and so it's again beginning to rebuild a community that has, that has been decimated and that has really, has, has really been down over very many years. So we're excited also about a social activity that is looking at boreholes, water holes. Women make long, long distances. Uh, going to look for water and they don't have enough time to do homework with their kids and they are not able to be productive. So we have that initiative uh, to ensure that they are beginning to do that and also an adult learning, uh, adult functional literacy to make sure that the trainings we give them, they can be able to absorb them and they can be able to practice what they learn. And finally, a small uh, activity on uh, village savings and loans. Um, which looks at farmers and helps farmers to begin to sometimes access $500. Um, and in Africa, in North Uganda, $500 can do a whole lot of help to a family, accessing seeds, helping the farmer to cultivate the next acre of land. And through that then, we are able to have a sustainable uh, productivity and sort of sustainable farming. And you're beginning to see happiness coming back to the area. You're beginning to see families connecting back again, kids that had run away coming back youth beginning to feel like there is a hope and a future for them. So we are very, very excited by, uh, by this activity. Thanks. Incredible. You are incredible. Well, Erasmus, you are now going to hear the good news that you are going to have even more work coming your way because Bono has got another surprise for us, an explanation of why his friend Renzo is still up here on stage. Bono. Um, well, you, you, you may have, it's hard to keep a secret around here. Um, this fine man on my right, um, extraordinary man, uh, comrade in arms. Um, There's a lot of people clapping yourself like an Irish person. Uh, that's very easy. I knew we got on for a reason. Uh, but there's some people like the, you know, the photo op and, you know, and, and some people do care, but on, on a very sort of, um, on, a, on a kind of 
sort of ephemeral level, few people will roll up their sort of denim sleeves and, and really get stuck into development work. And on my right is uh, really a hero of mine for the work he's doing um, to fight poverty. And the way he's doing it, his team, are using the sort of creative na energy uh, uh, um, to really apply themselves across a few surfaces. Um, we were excited by the work they were doing and we thought maybe we should do something together. And we said, you know, is there a way to do... At first we were thinking about jeans. Ali said, you know, jeans that were made from African cotton and, 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 and uh, sourced there and cut there and all the rest of it, uh, she said, they've got to be the sexiest jeans on earth. You know, like the original jeans. Excuse the bad pun. But... Um, they, they followed through on this, and, and now there's a whole capsule collection with Eden and Diesel, which is, which is going everywhere. Have, have you got any pictures of it, or, or are you just looking around? Okay, that's a secret. Uh, Ali, do you want to say something about it? Well, I think, you know, um, it's, it's been quite interesting, and, and it's actually gone really smoothly, considering Diesel are in Italy, we're in New York, our designer's in Paris, and we produce in Africa. Um, but it, the reason why it's worked is because we've all wanted to make this work. So the collection comes out in February and it's 100% grown and sewn in Africa um, from, with cotton used from um, our farmers. And, um, you know, it's like... Hmm? Even we are in overbooking with the cotton. Yeah, um, that's, that's the it. problem we have now. <laughs> we've used all the cotton. So now we have to go out and find. They're going to get really busy. <laughs> we have to find more African cotton. So, Renzo, from your problem. point of view, how, how did this happen? Was it just a brainstorm, or how did you lot come together for this particular project? There might have been wine involved. <laughs> <laughs> Renzo loves wine. I mean, the Irish don't drink, but on a special occasion. <laughs> We know each other from a very long time, uh, Bono and Dali, and uh, several times we tried to do something together, but maybe it was not the, 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 the real moment. And one day Bono says, let's go to, to see what uh, my, my farmer, my, uh, the cotton that they produce uh, in Africa, and they say, wow, that's nice. Uh, maybe at the same time you can come to visit what I'm doing with my foundation I'm in Mali, my village. And we take the opportunity that it was the Timbuktu Music Festival. So, and we went there, and we visited the farm. I was very, very impressed because to see these people, the energy, the, the positivity, the, the happiness of these people, you know, it was uh, incredible in love. And uh, we're thinking, we, think we, have, we have to do something. So, let's try to think. And uh, in a day, in a day, wow, we decided like this, must be do uh, something together, but it must be real, something real, not just uh, a capsule, not just something for to talk, not just something for um, do advertising. So, we think really how to create um, a job there, how to really give some uh, knowledge for to do the, um, the product, so I give my knowledge for to do in denim. But we started the process from the real beginning because we sourcing there. We, 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 we went to the village together and we, we, buy, we bought the cotton. So, and the, uh, you have to see all this uh, pure family, but with this highs that they smiley, they say, please give me help. Uh, and um, because um, the price of the cotton now went down, but uh, last year was a little bit better. So if you can uh, support us, so we can really create, uh, we can grow, we can, uh, we can build a little house, so we can even give an education to our child and say, let's go. And uh, you can see what we have done. It's 100% um, producing um, in uh, Africa and um, can be in the store uh, February, March. And as uh, we have done also an incredible project in uh, communication because um, we, uh, we use the all African people also for the communication. Uh, we have um, all famous, uh, can be models, acting, DJ, bloggers. Uh, people are famous in Africa. They start to become our testimonial, testimonial of Africa. So it's a, a very, very exciting project. It's very important for uh, Diesel and, and to remind us about the culture, um, you know, the DJ culture, the what you know the, the the sort of hipsters that are coming through and the writers that are coming through and and he, 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 Renzo is very keen that we go to the music festival festival de la desert in in in, um, in Mali and 
And, uh, they have a burning man in Mali? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of like that. It's amazing. Outside of Timbuktu in the dunes. And uh, Jefferson Hack came along, was a bunch of us. I was saying to Renzo, you know, it's, it's getting very tense uh, around here. You know, Mali, is, this is some trouble, I think, uh, coming in. No, it's no problem. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, uh, we ride in the dunes. We go in the dunes. I say, uh, Renzo, is that a rocket launcher? No, <laughs> uh, no, nah, nah, it's nice. Very nice. Bad people. Uh, well, listen there. We fall in love with the music and the festival. Jefferson ends up blowing a horn. I w walk on stage <laughs> with Tina Wirren, which are like the most rocking band on earth. And uh, to absolutely no applause, um, <laughs> which is fair enough. And, um, and then we leave and there's a civil war, literally a week, two weeks later. And the lit, the, the, three days after it started going, the, ver, the very hotel that Renzo and us and we stayed in is now the head, head, headquarters for I, 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 Sharia Justice, mm -hmm. which I think we know what that means. And it's, it's, it's outrageous because this is the part of the country, this part of West Africa is like the cradle of music, um, and, and Mali in particular, which became the blues, which became rock and roll, it went to America. It's, it's, it's really the, it's like the big bang of all the music that we love. And now, in that same town, it is against the law to make music. They beat you if you play the blues. They jail you if you make music. And we are, we are just so angry and we're so annoyed and, and, uh, uh, Renzo and myself are looking at a way to help Manny and the people who ran that music festival. So you'll be hearing more for us on that. But it's, it's, it's so brave, don't you think, to see creativity in the face of conflict. That's, that's, that's when fashion gets really exciting. Yes, and uh, the, the music story is a very deep one and a very sad one. And if you can do something, you can, as they said, put your fame behind this and um, let's hope you'll achieve something. Thank but you. I, at this point, would, would just like to clarify a few things so we can all read. So this new brand is going to be called Diesel Eden. But let's fast forward to February. I mean, some people might want to start lining up now. And you want to buy this product. Where do you actually buy it? It's going to be in the diesel stores and in select stores. All yeah, all the best top stores, Corsicoma, Colette, um, quite a few stores across the world. So the and, uh, the collection is really beautiful, of course. Yes. We start already with the second collection that uh, even yeah. is more beautiful. Yeah, that's true. And uh, we really enjoy very much yeah. to work together because it's, it's the two teams that are really working. Bon and, and Dali too, so <laughs> unbelievable. And we're, we're such a, Eden is such a tiny, tiny company. Um, so for us to be able to work with Diesel that can take this into a different volume can really, you know, do something of, of worth where we can talk it, but we can't quite walk it yet. Um, but with diesel, we can, and, and so that's been an amazing, amazing step for us. And could I ask you something? It's all of you, really. Um, we were talking yesterday about um, products that were produced in Kenya for Vivian Westwood and for Stella McCartney and Ilaria Venturini um, Fendi. And in all the cases, they all said, these designers, that they don't want to flag up on their products made in Africa. They just want it accepted that the work from Africa is so good that yes. they're using Africans by choice. Is that going to be the case here with the Diesel Eden label, or will people know that what they're buying is also helping people in Africa? Oh. We're trying not to talk about the the charitable piece of it, the, it's much more about... It's, a, it's meant to be a business. It's, it's, the it's idea is be trade. About we have, it's amazing, our African friends say to us, say, when well, we're talking about doing Eden first, and they say, is it um, another charitable project? <laughs> and we're like, no, 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 it's actually yes. this is business. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank. And... Uh, <laughs> So I think that this is what we have been talking about for two days at this conference, not charity, just work. Yes. 
And I think we'd all agree that this is a tremendous way forward in Africa. I want to ask you all one last question. Where is Africa, fashion, Eden, diesel, where is it all going to be by the end of the, this decade, by 2020? Where will it all stand? Who's going to hazard a guess? You know, Africa, Africa can grow, uh, like uh, China, every country that uh, start to go through the economic process. Uh, so with, uh, with the money that they gain, uh, that uh, they start to build the one store, we start to sell it also, to sell in some country, we are already. So we are in uh, Mauritius, uh, we are in uh, Casablanca, we are in uh, Marrakesh, uh, we are in Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, so we start to have a few stores already there, and uh, more the economy grow, more possibilities also for brands to be there. So it's not only that we can produce in there, we can uh, in, in pin them, but also we can make a business there. This conference will be in Africa, hopefully in That's 2020. Um, so uh, yeah, we just want to, we want to grow. And the more we grow, the more volume we can do in Africa. Um, and, and the more we want to be placed there, hopefully we'll be 100% in Africa by then. Bono, your next hope, dream, project? Oh, I just, I, I can guarantee you a lot more African designers, a lot more African uh, companies breaking through globally because they have, they'll have such a huge domestic audience that they'll get to scale quicker uh, there and then come out and, and, uh, and meet the rest of the world. And I think probably um, our dream would be that Eden would be, would be part of that. And, and that people will be pleased that, that we were there early on. Because, look, there, there's, there's, some, there's some fine factories in, in China, and we've found some um, to, work, to work with, and you don't want to be jingoistic about this. It's just that Africa is just a sexier place. It's just, that's the, that's the bottom line. It's just they, that the whole attitude is a different thing. <clears throat> to see an example where we, we, we do our village just one year after to see the, 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 the girls how more sexy they are more beautiful oh Rachel yes, I'm not surprised if you're around <laughs> <laughs> yeah but how they clean the street how you can see that, uh, that they're smiling more so just a one year after that we, we're there and a guarantee uh, the of sex well. with diesel this is great <laughs> so <laughs> Bono to you to Ali your wife to your hard-working team, to your friend, Renzo. I want to say thank you for coming here, thank you for talking to us, thank you for everything that you've done, and I salute you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody now gets a coffee break to think about this great session.